Hello, my name is Dr. Kasia Kleins. I'm CEO and founder of EPV Global Institute. And today I want to welcome you to a very special talk about anxiety and EBV. What the heck does anxiety have to do with EBV? It's actually a huge issue for our community. So let's talk about that. I have my cheat sheet here I'll be looking at because there's a lot of things. Actually, I listed nine items. Um, so uh, let's talk about the, the fact that the most common uh, symptoms, presentations, complaints that our community with EBV endures is brain fog, fatigue, sometimes muscular pain, you know, just general pain, different, different organs. Uh, maybe it's the sciatica kind of pain, muscular pain. Uh, but anxiety is right behind them. And it's huge. And so, you know, there's anxiety that can be attributed to the circumstance of having chronic EBV and having a lot of fear around this. And so that's very common. I actually feel uh, one of the first things that I have to do whenever I talk to somebody with chronic EBV is to dismantle, help them dismantle anxiety caused by fears of what's next, what's around the corner. Am I going to get cancer? Am I going to get autoimmune disorders? Am I going to get another autoimmune disorder if I already have one possibly induced by EBV? What's going to happen next? What are uh, going to be my next symptoms? Uh, what else is going to kind of break down in my body? So this is a circumstantial anxiety that is really valid. I want to really stress that I understand, uh, validate that for you because it's real. And so if you look at uh, research, the, the brain can be affected by the virus in so many ways. There's psychiatric disorders, even schizophrenia, bipolar disorders that are associated with EBV and of course depression and anxiety. So there is a whole bucket full. Unfortunately, when you look at studies, there's not much on anxiety in EBV, really. So, you know, medical studies lag behind. We're not going to wait for them. I'm going to tell you a couple of stories because anxiety in our community is huge. So um, before I go into nine uh, most common reasons why you can have anxiety with EBV, uh, let me tell you a couple of stories to just exemplify how bad it is. Uh, so you know I know how bad it can be for you. Uh, we had a student in our community who was a performing uh, musician. And one of her problems, of course, was was a, a brain fog, fatigue, uh, a bucket full of medical conditions. However, the biggest concern was she had developed anxiety attacks almost whenever she was in the car. So her biggest concern was, am I going to be able to get on the road again and perform live? And of course, she was able to do that because we worked together. Another student of ours was a mom. She was of the same problems, you know, with EBV, and her biggest concern was that her anxiety was so high whenever she was either in the passenger seat in the car. Her biggest goal for the EBV recovery was to be able, you know, she had a deadline, her daughter was graduating, and she just wanted to be able to get in the car and get to the graduation. That's how bad her anxiety was. And sure enough, she was able to do just that because we worked on EBV together. Um, more recently, I talked to a woman who said, you know, I had such anxiety, anxiety attack out of the blue. I was driving the car and thanks goodness I had my marbles still in my brain. So I pulled over and stopped the car because she could have crashed. So the anxiety is real. This is not, this is not just a, you know, a little bit of anxiety. People can really suffer. It can debilitate your life. So, um, let's talk about, um, the biggest factor <laughs> I would say number one is, um, if there is virus, if EBV is in your system, if, if it gets into your brain, we have one type of uh, immune cells in the brain that will fire. Uh, and these immune cells do not have a good turn off system. So if the virus gets there and the immune cells start attacking it, 
then they're going to keep firing and firing and firing and eventually fire at your own neurons. Okay, so that can wreak havoc, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to cause anxiety per se. So the mechanisms for anxiety, uh, direct mechanisms uh, caused by EBV, uh, we are not clear, you know, I'm not seeing any research, so I can only speculate. So we're going to continue going with what I actually know. So you probably are aware that stress is number one reactivating factor. That's what pulls you under. That's what re-triggers your EBV every time. And a couple of things that I need you to keep in mind when, when you consider your stress level. What happens when we are stressed? <clears throat> we eat crap. We eat wheat. We eat sugar. We eat cheese. Cheese and wheat create opiate effect in the brain, so they provide that euphoric effect. Unfortunately, it's short, it's short lived, but that's chocolate, you know, um, uh, chocolate provides the same effect. Sugar is more addictive than, uh, morph, uh, was it morphine? Uh, cocaine, cocaine in studies. So when you're stressed, you don't eat well, you go for these big ones because they provide little boost. Uh, however, with that comes uh, nutritional deficiency of the nutrients that you need. So when we are under stress, we don't eat well. We just eat more junk, right? It's just it's just the coping mechanism. We don't go and make a healthy smoothie or you know make a beautiful meal for ourselves. Not under stress, right? So it's like a <clears throat> it's like a revolving though, one lead to the other. the The problem with stress is. It reactivates EBV, but also part of the reason is you eat poorly and so your nu nutrient status start, starts dropping. Your key nutrients start dropping. And we have studies that black and white show when your nutritional status drops, your EBV becomes more virulent, meaning more aggressive. It can really backfire at you. So we have a double whammy. The third issue with stress is when you're under stress, you actually are like a leaking bucket. You start leaking, losing your key nutrients. Okay. And the fourth problem with stress is that even if you have a good diet, you are not absorbing the nutrients during stress. The body is not, not interested in procreation, sex, in a digestion, when you're under stress, the body just wants to run or fight or hide, kind of like a deer in the flashlight. Everything stops, right? So some of the key nutrients that you are losing in stress and not absorbing in stress <laughs> are nutrients which prevent anxiety. And it doesn't matter what condition you have. It's just for all of us. And uh, the key nutrients are some of the B vitamins, B1, thiamine, uh, B3, niacin. And number three, the most important nutrients, most single most important nutrients. If anything, uh, if you forget everything today from this talk, one thing that I want you to keep in mind is magnesium. And I'm going to put a link to the magnesium we use in our community. This is the, you drink this, this is very effective. It bypasses any gut problems. It's isotonic. Uh, you need magnesium, it's depleted in stress and it causes anxiety if you have magnesium deficiency. Um, you know, with, with, uh, with stress comes adrenal uh, insufficiency. It's very common in our community. Pretty much it comes with the territory. If you have chronic EBV, you probably have chronic, EB, uh, chronic uh, uh, adrenal insufficiency. Uh, and so, Adrenal insufficiency itself has been linked to magnesium deficiency. So that we have in the studies, especially in women uh, who are 60 years old or older, uh, this can cause you know, anxiety kind of attacks in the middle of the night. Um, there's other reasons in particular for EBV to wake up in the middle of the night. Uh, and I have an entire chapter on that in the book, entire module in our recovery program, because that's, you know, that's, Magnesium is part of it, but that's EBV per se. But anyway, uh, uh, let's talk about um, magnesium a little bit more. Um, 
magnesium uh, prevents anxiety. So when you have constipation, muscle cramping, muscle twitches, what else is there? Uh, when you crave chocolate, you probably need more, more magnesium. But also inside your brain, magnesium and B6 are necessary to create a neurotransmitter called GABA. And GABA is, uh, pr produces an opposite feeling to anxiety. It makes you feel like you're on cloud number nine. It's like, oh, I feel so good and relaxed. So that's GABA. If you don't have enough magnesium, which like I said, you deplete in stress, you're not going to get enough, then you're not going to produce GABA. Uh, and so you're not going to make, that's, that's how uh, you create anxiety, a uh, deficiency of magnesium. And that is probably why when you soak in Epsom salts in your hot bath, you feel so good because Epsom salts uh, include uh, in the formulation magnesium sulfate. And magnesium literally gets through the pores. Your pores are open uh, in the skin because uh, you're in the warm water. And so magnesium literally gets in your system through the skin. Um, so this is a, this is the biggest issue. There's a couple of other things that I want to signal that can cause anxiety. Vagus nerve can be attacked by the virus. Vagus nerve can be pinched, uh, by hiatal hernia. Sometimes people have hiatal hernia and that can cause anxiety. Uh, Wi-Fi technology can cause anxiety and different, different other symptoms, but anxiety could be one of them. So. You want to make sure that your router is boxed in the Faraday box, that you don't have a, um, an active smart meter on your house, that your phone is off and you don't use it as an alarm clock, please. <laughs> um, and there's all oh, there's the last thing that I'm, I will mention is, ha, huh, uh, let me streamline it for it. People that have chronic illnesses that are complicated when even functional doctors can't really help you on top of EBV, uh, there's a percentage of population that will have hypochlorhydria, which means that your stomach is not secreting enough acid. The acid is fundamental, very important, and it's also necessary for you to absorb magnesium and some of the B vitamins. So if you low, have low secretions of stomach acid, you may not be able to get that magnesium from the food that you're eating because you need that for absorption. Uh, and this is why we love um, uh, isotonic magnesium because it bypasses these problems. It still gets delivered. Capsules, not so, not so much. Hypochlorhydria can be caused by uh, many factors, including aging. However, in our community, a common factor is autoimmune disorder related to uh, thyroid. It's uh, thyroiditis, um, um, autoimmune thyroiditis called Hashimoto's. So basically, the problem is that the thyroid is the organ, is the... Uh, the glands that stimulate proper hydrochloric acid secretion. So when, when your thyroid is going under, starting to be uh, underactive, then the stomach will probably correspond. It's very common. And what people don't realize is we have an epidemic of low thyroid function. But if you look at studies, about 90-95% of low functioning thyroid is actually autoimmune uh, thyroiditis, Hashimoto's, which is not properly tested, so doctors miss it. But what you also want to know is that Hashimoto's is often triggered by EBV. There's other infections like H. pylori as well, but EBV is the, the biggest driving force. So if we in our community, if we focused on EBV work, we have been able to show reversal, complete clearance of Hashimoto's. So, you know, that's how we can also um, support the nutrients from being depleted. So as you can see, anxiety is huge. It's complicated. Uh, the biggest tool you have is proper magnesium supplementation. The complex supplementation would be fantastic because you are under stress and you deplete, you urinate those. Um, magnesium, women need minimum 400 milligrams a day. We urinate it out and sweat it out even if we don't have stress. 
So really, really important to know. Hopefully this will help you. And just know anxiety comes with the territory. So don't feel bad. It's real. It's not in your head only. This is a real problem. Hopefully this, uh, this training will help you feel a little bit better about that and do something about it. Ah, I'm going to link uh, a link um, to this, this supplement below as well for you if you need a magnesium right now.